CBC News Chief Correspondent Peter Mansbridge has been following the Franklin expedition for years. He's been on those ships searching the Arctic for clues, including the one at the center of this new discovery. And he joins me, me now live in studio with some new information on this story. I, I've been bothering my producers all day because I'm a little bit of a Canadian history buff, so I'm yeah, kind of sure, obsessed with story. this. So, uh, so what have you learned? Well, a number of things i got to say, first of all. First of all, the, the, the ship was actually, the, whatever this is, was located on September 3rd. And they've been working to confirm it ever since. Parks Canada is now leading that confirmation process, mm -hmm. as they would have to. Uh, but it wasn't found by Parks Canada. It was found by the Arctic Research Foundation, which is a group which works in concert with uh, Parks Canada, did so uh, on the uh, finding of Erebus two years ago. Uh, I've got to declare, uh, as I've done many times before, that I'm actually on the advisory board of the Arctic Research Foundation because, like you, I've, I've been fascinated by this story for mm -hmm. years. Um, ARF, as we call it, uh, has have their own vessel, the Martin Bergman, who's named after a good friend of mine who died in a plane crash in Resolute five years ago. Uh, but the, uh, those on board the Bergman mm -hmm. um, found this in an area called Terror Bay uh, in the Northwest Passage. And it has every appearance, and I mm -hmm. just a few moments ago witnessed some video footage, which we'll be able to air a little later, um, of we what they have found. actually have it now. I don't mean to interrupt you, but oh, I just want to let now? you know that's that. That's fantastic, mm -hmm. because there are some elements here when you, when you see it, uh, the, that's the bell from, uh, from uh, Terror, and it looks almost identical to the bell that was on Erebus, and which is one of the other uh, reasons that they're looking very uh, comfortably at making the conclusion this is it. There's also uh, a smokestack here. I'm not sure if we can see it in, in here. And, and the stack came out of the steam engine. That was, there it is there, mm -hmm. which is, was something new to vessels of that era uh, in the uh, 1840s that could be powered very slowly uh, by steam. Uh, but nevertheless, that's one of the other areas. But the ship is in, is in quite incredible shape when you consider how long it's been underwater. Um, but this vessel, Terror, they were convinced, one of Franklin's two ships, they were convinced it was destroyed by the ice. Well, mm -hmm. it's actually in remarkable shape. You, would, you would, wouldn't necessarily know it from this video, uh, but it is in great shape. I mean, that smokestack, you could tell it's exactly. a smokestack. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and so the, you know, the, the, those who found it once again led, just as it was with Erebus, uh, by uh, Inuit oral history. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the fellows ha had remembered seeing something at a certain point. Nobody seemed to have taken it too seriously until the Bergman people said, OK, well, let's go there. We'll go to that exact so spot. And within, literally, within a, a hours, they stumbled right on top of it. And, uh, and, and so here we go with another you know, fascinating little slice of Canadian history. Unbelievable. So what makes discoveries like this and the Franklin Expedition in general important news for Canadians? Well, think of it a, a, a couple of ways. They, they, they were looking for the Northwest Passage, which was the dream of every explorer who came to Canada. That's why Canada was discovered. They weren't looking for Canada. They were looking for, the, for what they called the Orient in those days. Um, so at the time, the Franklin edition, uh, Expedition, which was one of the biggest, more than 120 guys on it, uh, was lost. They, that started a process of uh, rescue missions that lasted almost 50 years dozens of rescue missions. You know, we talk about air, the Malaysian air flight that went mm -hmm. missing, that was nothing compared mm -hmm. with what they went through trying to find the Franklin. And through those uh, expeditions, we actually saw our country unfold. Mm -hmm. Canada actually became, um, you know, much bigger on the map, partly due to those uh, expeditions searching for the Franklin, both through the Arctic and also mm -hmm. up through uh, the provinces and, and heading north by land. So, you know, there, there are all kinds of great stories attached, and you know them, Andrew, because you're a, a student of all this, too, that are quite fascinating. Uh, and it's, you know, full dedication to these, uh, these people. It's a, you know, a non-profit, private enterprise, the Arctic Research Foundation. They've done a, a great job in concert with government mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on being a part of locating both these two vessels. I, I don't know if I can ask you this, but is this, do we think, are we pretty sure, I mean, what else could it be? You need the final confirmation, yeah. but, you know, it, it's not like there were a lot of vessels that mm -hmm. sank 160 years ago that were built like this, right length, you know, the setup with the, with the steam engine, the ship's bell, all that, point 
you know, the, the, I've talked to the, you know, I've, I've mm. talked to the people on, on board the Bergman. They're like 100% convinced, and these aren't just mm. rookies out for the first time mm -hmm. looking for stuff, like there were some on the on the last expedition. These guys have been part of this process for years now. They know what they've found, but Parks Canada will make the final mm -hmm. determination.